Hello, it's uh, 1801 Dave over here in Birmingham, England, and um, welcome to the, the channel. If you're new here, thanks for uh, coming in and having a look. Uh, if you're returning, well, appreciate you uh, taking the time out to do that. I um, wanted to just do a little run through on the 11 metre cluster. Now, I'm going to assume that you know nothing about this and you've come here to have a, a little look as to where we go and what it does and, and what happens on it. If, if you're familiar with any of the clusters, not necessarily just cluster DX that I've got on the screen, then there's probably nothing who here for you to learn to be honest, but you're more than welcome to stop and have a run through. And the, obviously if you find anything that I've uh, not quite got on the mark or there's something you think should be pointed out then yeah please by all means anyone feel free to leave questions or any comments um here on the page um right so what are we going to look at clusters um we're going to look at cluster dx because that's the one that uh, people seem to be using the most is it the better of the clusters well that's a personal opinion let's just say there's there's other clusters out there the other two main ones are 11dx.net and there's also a, a, a cluster called LF11 which are both very good in their own ways and offers things slightly differently to what this one does but this seems to be the one that's getting the most traffic and this is the one that people um, have spoken to me and said can you do a bit of a walkthrough and show us how we use it and what what happens so try and keep these uh, short we'll break it up into three four maybe five short uh, parts and, uh, and we'll go from there so the first thing you're going to need to do and uh, you can see that mine's saved uh, the first thing you're going to need to do is register now down here you, you will see a, a click here you click here and it takes you to a page where you do the standard filling now it won't show it me because one of the drawbacks with cluster dx is that you're only allowed one call sign yeah that's correct if you've got two or three and you want to log for two or three different call signs you can't do it using cluster dx you can only use one unlike um dx11 uh, sorry 11 dx and unlike lf 11 which is um really good for multiple logs um you can only do one on here so if you're going to commit to cluster dx um just make sure that uh, if you do want to log using a different call sign just bear in mind you will not be able to do it on here i can't show you the page that you log in with uh, sorry that you fill the form out with because it won't let me i've tried using um the vpn to confuse it and it still recognises me, so I can't show you the form. Um, but it's just a standard form that you fill out. You have to give it a username, you have to make up a password. And you do uh, have to give it your email address uh, for two reasons. One, they will get in touch with you to, to verify the account that this is what you want to do. And secondly, that's how else are you going to get your QSL cards that come in um so once you've filled out the form uh you've sent it back to them they will respond to you and you will get a login details which will be the username that you've given them and the password that you've asked them to use once you've done that and you go back to that original screen that we were on originally which is clusterdx.nl you type in the details excuse me and uh, it will open up on this page the other thing that you will get frustrated about by cluster dx is the speed of the, the page right so what's my first job when i've got here well my first job is to tell you what we're going to be doing this these are the spots what we have here is people when you're on your qso you can fill in a box 
enter it and it will give the details of the QSI you're, you're on and that's that's here we'll explain why we do that later the other things we'll be looking at are the online logbook which you will find up on this blue bar here and the other thing that we'll be doing is looking at EQSLs which is all up here because all this is linked in together but when you get onto here the first thing that you will choose or you should really do because you're going to need some of this information maybe later is go up here in this top right hand corner and there's a button that says profile so you, you, you click on that or tap on that and this page opens so it, it doesn't obviously show your passwords uh, here's your details you can put an avatar in if you want to but here's the details about you you can fill in if you want to where you are your skype if you still just anybody uses skype still uh, your facebook details uh, whatever else but one of the things you probably want to fill in is this box here and this is your working conditions so what they're asking you really is what, what what are you using so into there you fill in your antenna your transceiver your radio i don't know what this agm ams is so i left that blank uh, if you're using a microphone if uh, sorry i'll rephrase that because you're bound to be using a microphone what microphone you're using is it the one out the box the standard one is it something else and whatever amplifier you're using as well so you put all that in there because when we do our qsls later there is an option to put this onto the qsl card obviously if you haven't fed this information in you won't do it all the rest of the boxes all the standard sort of things that you know about it gives you an option to what you want to see on the cluster and then update the profile right be aware if you fill any of these things out update at the end before you do anything else and then you can go back to the cluster so that's the first part short and sweet how you get on and how to fill out your profile details what i will say before i shut this first part down and we move on to looking at the cluster itself there's loads of information along here on these blue tabs along here and along here many different things you can do there's information over here about the ionosphere the ionosphere um, there's a chat window up here at the top so you can get involved with that along here it tells you about uh, the solar flux which we we all like to see this preferably over 200 and today we're showing 161 and all the other stuff to do with the atmospheric conditions right and then there's all of the things as well but i'm not going to go into them you can look through those at your leisure you uh, can see what you want to use and what you don't want to use so as i say in the next one we're going to look at the cluster in itself um and then we'll move on to the logbook and the eqsl systems after right so that's the first one done thanks for taking the time to come along and have a look hopefully we've begun to whet the appetite for uh, for what happens here um and yeah thank thanks for being here thanks for taking the time and uh, we'll catch up with you on the second part uh, very soon thanks again bye bye